What's up, guys? Today is two weeks um, after Sandy, actually to the day. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for all the emails and the phone calls and even the Skypes that I've gotten all over the world asking how we're doing in New York. Now, my house fared pretty well. I have a small hole in my roof, which I actually fixed myself. Um, my shed just disintegrated and went into the next door neighbor's yard. I kind of pieced that together and, it, and we're all back um, in pieces and it's fine. Uh, and a couple of trees came down. My next door neighbor had a massive tree come down in their yard and uh, did some damage. So you know, everybody's trying to pull together and help them out. But we are nothing compared to Staten Island and Long Island. Those guys really got hammered. So uh, again, uh, I appreciate all your emails. Today, uh, we are, like I said, working on this truck and trailer. Now, the cool thing is a lot of my customers uh, have large collections, 50, 100 cars, and my job is to come in and make sure that the cars are clean every single day and they get to drive them. And a lot of them are so rare and, and so uh, unique, if you will, that you can't just go after them uh, in, in the normal way. What I mean by the normal way is, you know, wash them hard and, and things like that. That's where Hydrate all um, sort of came to exist. But anyways, today I'm gonna do uh, a truck and trailer and it's kind of it's kind of different because this actually stores uh, my buddy's Matt's cars. Um, so it's as if he's got all his collection in, in, in one spot. Uh, so it's pretty neat. It's beautiful, beautiful rig. Of course, he's got a bathroom and, and kitchen and it's one of those double wides where you push a button and the whole thing expands. Really cool to, uh, to go to the racetrack and live out of that while you're at the track. And of course, in the back, he's got the double decker, but I'll show you guys all this, uh, all this coming up today. So uh, stay tuned, and we are going to clean a massive, uh, beautiful white and chrome uh, race trailer. Well, this is the truck and trailer that I'm working on. This is a 2008 Freightliner with a Columbia cab, and of course, the trailer in the back. Now, we'll take a tour of inside. This is a double wide, so this pops out which is pretty cool and doubles the inside of uh, the galley there in the bedroom area. This is the driver's area. There is a bed up top here. Let's take a quick tour because this is cool. I popped these already. Propane tank. Extra batteries. That is the bathroom uh, sewage tank. Ladder on up. Now let's walk to the back. Now look at the inside of that. Now as you can see, this is a lift and the lift goes up. So you can put two cars in there and this would be the top area. Got his, got his spare wheels back there and the owner was telling me that this is driving him crazy. This is why I love these customers. They were changing a transmission in here, and clearly the car was um, was pulled up, meaning uh, the the uh, the lift was up, and they were changing the transmission. And he's got handprints and all kinds of nasty stuff going on everywhere. But I'll back out. He's got a nice little workbench there, and of course storage. And he puts a go kart up there for when he's at the track. So this is what I'm cleaning today. Plus the inside of the cab, which is almost another house. So now you've seen the outside. This is what the inside looks like. Obviously the driver's cabin. Now we'll pan up a little bit. There's sleeping quarters number one. Come back down. Now looking back into the galley here. There's the steps, 
And if we come all the way through the shower, and of course the head. Now, here's something very cool, right? What's that say? Slide room in and out. We want to go out. Now I'm going to show you how this works. Watch the floor. So as you can see, the room is growing. Pretty neat. Now we just went from a small little living space to a huge one. All right, as you can see, from here to here is how much this grew in here. So there's a, a lot of living space, I have to say. Got your TV. Again, you got your beds up here. This turns into a bed. This obviously folds down, goes flat. This folds down, goes flat. So this is what the inside of a pretty badass race trailer looks like. But we need to clean things like this. We need to clean the floors here, clean the bathroom floors, make sure the galley is looking good. It's a little grimy. Ugh, a lot grimy. Matthew, in here is not too bad. So it's not all glamorous, folks. You do have to clean up after you're racing, but it's a job that I'm happy to do. Oh, look at that, ammo right through the window. Boom. Now we're in the front part of the trailer. This is the drivers and the passenger seats. Now obviously there's a lot of traffic that goes in between driving and going to the motorhome, the bathroom, the shower, the, the galley, all that. Um, so there's a bunch of stains here. Now this is much like a home. This is real carpet. It's a little bit different than most um, automotive carpets, but uh, what we have is a uh, interior cleaner versus a leather cleaner. So what I'm using is my fabric cleaner on this little area. Can you see the, the high traffic dirt? So I'm putting a little bit down just like this. Forgive me, I'm scrunched up here trying to get on camera. Have a regular tar uh, terry cloth. Now a lot of you may be thinking, hey, why don't you use your shampoo machine? Well, I have a shampoo machine. It's just not always necessary because I, I feel I can get this out with just a standard, you know, whatever this is, seven, eight, ten dollar brush. And I've had this one for, I don't even know, probably 10, 15 years. So they last forever. What you do is you put a little bit of fabric uh, cleaner down. It's a little bit different than the leather cleaner. The leather, um, plastic and leather cleaner is a little bit more um, sensitive to the leather because obviously leather dries out and things like that. The fabric cleaner is specific to uh, pulling up the dirt in, in carpets and things like that. So it works both in cars and uh, in regular, I mean, this is just like you would have in your, in your home. So I let it sit for a second or two and then get in there and scrub it with this brush. Now the idea here is to bring up the stain, to bring it to the surface, and then you're gonna wipe it away with your cloth. It's a very quick way of doing it. Now the shampoo machines, I'm gonna put a little bit more on some certain areas. Now the shampoo machines, what they do, the good ones, is they'll heat up. And what the heat does is if you think of a carpet pile, what we call a pile, uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything sticking up here, but uh, carpet pile, one of those little guys. Um, if you think of it as as your two fingers here, when they when they color it, you know when they make it uh, tan or khaki like this or black or red or green or whatever it is the color, what they'll do is they'll they'll heat up the the uh, you know they'll put it in a hot bath. And basically, what that does is it opens up the pile like this, and then they'll put in whatever color, green, blue, yellow, whatever, and it'll fill up the pile go in there and then they'll cool it back down and it'll close again. 
So what happens is when a stain gets into these carpets, it kind of gets all in the pile and kind of seeps in there, right? So the best way to get it out, generally speaking, if it's really bad, is to heat it up. Because what happens when you heat it up? It opens up again, and then you can agitate the dirt, and the dirt will come out. And then once it cools down and you dry it off, in theory, it should go back, and then the dirt has been released. That's kind of the concept behind a hot water extractor. That's what, uh, you know, what makes it so good. But in cases like this where you don't need it, don't use it. Remember, use, use the minimum amount of uh, aggressive uh, behavior that you can do to accomplish what you're trying to do. Same thing outside, same thing inside. So do a little bit more scrubbing. Yeah, this guy just came up. All right, so it's a little damp now. Take your, take your towel. You can use a microfiber if you have it. I don't because it's, uh, I go, so, go through so many of these. Now, got all the dirt in here, right? And look at this, area is completely clean. So that need to be, you know, some super duper crazy machine to get it? No, you just need a little bit of elbow grease and it'll come off perfect. Now my last little trick, and I'll show you before, I'll show you the whole behind the camera because uh, there's tons of carpet there. I'll show you uh, what I do to, when the customer comes to see it, he'll look at it and be like, whoa, it looks like a, looks like Yankee Stadium, looks like a, like somebody cut the grass, so I'll do this, but I'll show you it again. Go one direction. The best idea is to start from one direction and pull towards you, right? Pull all the carpet fibers in one direction. See, it's sort of uniform. I'm just doing this little area. See, it's all kind of a darker color, and if I go that way, see how it's, it's light? So you pull it all in one direction, then take your, uh, then take your, uh, your brush, go forward, I go one space over the same width, just like that. Forward, pull, forward, and so on. And you just keep going. And you can make all kinds of patterns. In another video, I'll show you. Like you can put, you can put your names inside the carpet. Sounds a little goofy. Uh, it sounds a little goofy, but customers absolutely dig it. So, anyways, uh, on to the next thing. All right, guys, we are inside the trailer and what's happened is a lot of uh, a lot of transmission work is actually taking place in this in this bay so what they do is they put the car up here obviously lift it up like I'm uh, currently probably I don't know 10 12 feet up in the air and they'll work on the transmission below but when they come up here the mechanics and the guys that work on this race team touch the side of this and get it really dirty and sort of drive the uh, the uh, Matt my buddy drives him crazy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take my AP cleaner, which is all purpose cleaner. I'm just going to hit it a few times. I don't know if you can notice in the video, but the AP cleaner is very goopy. Exactly what you want to do. You want this to stick. Let it do its work. And just take a, a regular towel, terry cloth, and just wipe it clean. As you can see, it comes clean in two seconds. A really great cleaner. Just letting it sit there. Breaking up everything, look at that, breaking that all up. And you're good to go. Now I'm gonna do this on the entire inside of the trailer. You can see here, I don't know if you can catch that. Really dirty. So I'd imagine they're starting cars in here and testing it and doing whatever. A lot of it's hitting ceilings. So I'm just gonna run through and do this to the entire uh, inside. What it's gonna do when he comes to see it, when it's done, it's going to make this just look so much brighter inside because nothing's distracting, nothing's catching your eye away from all the white in here. So pretty easy. Wipe it down, AP cleaner, you're good to go. I know the next question is going to be what's the difference between doing a truck wheel and a normal wheel? Well, the first big thing is it's bigger. Look at the size of this. Uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot. Um, difference you need to do just a little bit more patience and hit the wheel and you're good to go
One thing you're definitely going to need to use is your lug nut brush. I love this brush. And look at the size of these caps on the lug nuts. Insane. Huge. You get in there and use this brush to agitate everything and then hit it with water. It'll come right down. I guess the major difference of doing this in a regular tire or a regular wheel is this a whole lot more of them. <laughs> now we've cleaned the inside of the cabin and I've already cleaned the inside of the, uh, of the trailer here. I'm exhausted because there's a lot of work and there's a lot of grease and grime and things from a, a whole race season. But now it's time to clean uh, both the exterior of the cab and the trailer. Two different styles. As you can see, I have a soft bristled brush here, brush, and I very, very, very rarely use it. In fact, I probably use it only on this every uh, before we put it away for the end of the season. Um, it's super soft, but I, I would never use this on a car. It's not my thing. This, however, is plastic. It's like this vinyl, um, and it's white. So uh, I need to get up there and reach, and it'd be silly for me to do it with a hand wash. Now, having said that, the front of the car, the cab it's painted and there's chrome everywhere uh, on the bottom of the car i'm gonna on the, on the truck i'm going to be using a uh, uh hand wash on that so take this dunk it in mixture of foam obviously and you're going to want to still do up and down motions and not side to side just same thing as if you're washing a car in the normal fashion uh up and down up and down try to avoid swirls the, the big thing is the top of this has been totally mangled by trees, which you can see on any 18 wheeler that uh, you know, you're, you're looking on the highway, you'll see sometimes it's hard to navigate and the trees rip the top off and scratch it. So this is not gonna do any damage at all. We'll, uh, we'll shoot another video when I do the front. Now we're starting the cab of this truck and the big difference here is I'm not gonna use the long brush. I gotta get in there with my wash mitt with my foam, quick guard the whole thing, and clean it up in this sort of fashion. And the reason why is if you scratch any of this beautiful chrome, not to mention will Matt wring my neck, but it just wouldn't be cool. You know what I mean? It, it, you really scratch it and it's just, it'd be a shame to do that. So just take your time, do the rest of the car with a washman. I'm already on, I don't even know, maybe an hour and a half worth of washing this car, or this truck. So it's gonna take you some time, but you do it the right way, it's gonna look like a million bucks when he pulls up to the racetrack. Well, now that we've cleaned the entire truck, cab, everything, wheels, it's still wet. The next step you'd wanna do is, normally you'd go right to hydrate, right? I'm not gonna do that here just yet. What I'm gonna do is use uh, a super vac blower, you know, for the leaves, which he actually had inside the truck. And if you can hear that generator running, I'm gonna use the power from the truck to dry itself off. I thought that was pretty cool. So first I'm gonna use this, then afterwards we're gonna do a little hydrate. The truck's gonna look fantastic. Let's get to it. So we just finished using the leaf blower. Now, I totally recommend using uh, a leaf blower or air when you're doing such a massive uh, truck like this, what I like to call real estate. Tons and tons of real estate. It'd take you, it'd take you another day just to dry it. So um, I knocked, I don't even know, 70% of the water off, uh, and now you just have these little drips and drabs. So what you wanna do is take ammo hydrate, one or two squirts, just pick up the rest of the water. Now at the same time, what you're doing is you're protecting this chrome. And you're protecting the paint as soon as I get up here. You're drying it properly, which is the big thing, right? And then you're protecting it. And you're gonna pick up any of the loose little bits that may be stuck in here that the blower didn't get. And it's just a smarter way of drying uh, your paint. Now, as you can see, I'll talk to you through the, <laughs> through the chrome. As you can see, it looks pretty good. Uh, I got the rest of the truck to do. This should probably take another, I don't know, 35 to 40 minutes to do the rest of the truck like this by hand. 
but this is the this is the 10 percent that separates uh, pretty good detail with an amazing detail so you just gotta go through it do the steps and it's gonna look good so let's move on and uh, go to the next step so we finished basically uh, the whole car. We had to do a little bit of touch-ups here and there and the wheels and the windows and things like that. But uh, one, the owner made me aware of something that was driving him crazy and that was on all of these uh, cubby holes for uh, what they do is a lot of them have you know, the gas opening and the utility shower. And what happens is uh, a lot of the dirt gets in these rubber gaskets and drips down here. Now what I did was I put uh, AP cleaner on here just to kind of give me a little bit of extra bite you can see it's starting to come off. If I can't get it off just with my finger or a towel, I can use a little scrub brush like I use on the interior of the car. Just, I mean, very lightly, just enough to kind of bring it to the surface. And then, of course, you can wipe it away. Now, the thing here is uh, this is just part of owning a motorhome. It's, it's, these gaskets are going to get a little you know, clogged up, and they're going to drip down. Um, so uh, what I'm saying is you can't really... Uh, you can't really prevent it, but what I'd like to do is I'll put skin, you know, I'm going to skin this whole car. Um, and what it will do is make it easier to get off. So it's kind of the uh, trials and tribulations of owning a, a motor. Alright, since we finished the skin, we, you know, we dried the car, the whole thing, it's looking spectacular. Um, my last little step here is, of course, cleaning up the, the rims. Now we washed them already. Just picking up the last little bits of water, toweling it down. You want to make sure the rubber is dry, which it is just because it sat for a while. Take your tire applicator, take a bit of ammo, tire gel, and you're going to massage it into the rubber. Into the rubber. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm at a truck facility today. <laughs> that horn scared the heck out of me. <laughs> Reapply a little bit and massage it in. You know, the only issue with this is I got a lot of wheels to do because this is a big truck. This is a water-based product. I highly, highly, highly recommend using a water-based product versus solvent. I have a video on there, uh, one of my old, old videos. I think I shot it with an iPhone um, that talks about uh, water-based versus uh, uh, um, solvent-based. And you want to stay away from solvent-based. This is going to actually work itself into the, into the tire. Um, and the more you put it on there, the shinier it'll be. You can, you can have a matte look, which I'm doing for this one because we don't really want it too shiny. Uh, or you can have it uh, super shiny by adding more and more layers. Pretty easy. Uh, that's about it. I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. And shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com. I will take a final view or a walk around of the, of the car. But uh, until the next ride along video, I appreciate you guys watching and talk to you soon. It's looking pretty good right now. It's protected. And I don't know if you remember, but over here, there was pretty dirty. And I, as you can see, the chrome. Let's come say hi. The chrome is looking killer right now. And of course, the rest of the trailer. Bright clean and of course protected. We're going to put it away for the season, pull it out, and it'll be looking pretty darn good. We'll, we'll do a, a quick wash next season and uh, go racing. Thanks for watching guys.